Hello, Few Candy here, and welcome back to Planet Zoo, the beginner's guide. And we've got lots to do today, but I do just first want to touch on this little viewpoint that we added at the end of the last episode when we're talking about landscaping and detailing around habitats and around your zoo. Michael W made the great point that we should add a vista point in here to actually get Sims to come up here, which you can see is now happening, and they're even sitting on the bench, <laughs> which is lovely, lovely to see. So if you want to do vista points you need to come into facilities media devices and education and then i think it's on visual media yes here it is the vista point now you can just stick these in various places around your zoo and sims will come there it's almost like a photo point you can see on the top of it it's got that camera symbol but what it does mean is guests will come to this point to take in the views it could be of an animal it could be of whatever you see there seem to be getting excited about looking out onto a completely undetailed lake at the moment so there we go. But yeah, great, great suggestion from Michael W. Thank you for that, for adding one in here, because now they walk in. The other thing I do want to talk about, and you'll see, I've added in these little ribbon barriers around this pole, because I found once I'd added in this vista point, guests were somehow getting stuck around this pillar that we have in the middle, because it is technically in the middle of the pathway here. So if you have issues with that, you can use these and you can also hide them as well. So you don't have to visually see them like this, but I thought that was kind of a nice thing. You can add in barriers to tell guests that they cannot go to certain places. So if you come into bins, benches and security and go to security, there's loads of barriers for this. So you could do a curb barrier. If we just span it around and put it here, then they wouldn't be able to walk over this barrier if I do that. Okay, well, they, <laughs> they were probably already pathfinding, so they've ignored it. But other people wouldn't be able to walk over that. And the great thing with these is, is you don't have to see them. So you can like put in a sign and just hide it under the ground and then guests couldn't go there. So actually, if we zoom back over to here, for example, where I put in this makeshift rope across here, what I should have actually done if I was actually thinking about it was use a guest barrier of some description to put across this little entrance way here and that would just stop the guests from going in there. Of course we've used a staff path here so they can't go here anyway but if you don't like the look of the staff paths because frankly they are pretty nasty you could just upgrade this to a regular path and then use one of these guest barriers to stop guests from entering. So again like I said you can hide it under the ground and it will still work so you don't have to visually see it if you don't want to. So a nice little trick there, particularly if you don't like the staff paths or if like me, you're having issues with guests getting stuck and that sort of thing. So the next thing I do want to talk about is selling animals. You can see in our penguin habitat here, we have a lot now. <laughs> I think we started out with five or maybe six penguins and there are a hell of a lot of them in here. You'll also notice our conservation credits have gone up dramatically since the last episode. And animals escaped. Who's escaped? We have a baby raccoon escaped. Wonderful. That hasn't happened before and I'm not sure why that would be. So we'll need to investigate that later. Okay, now we've been distracted by the escaping raccoon. Let's come back to the penguins. Yes, we're massively up on conservation credits because I have been through all of our animals and sold loads of them, basically. It released them into the wild, which is how you can get conservation credits. So for example, you see here, if we wanted to get rid of these two raccoons, we could release them to the wild. So in general, any animals that you have bred in your zoo, you'll be able to do that with. If you've taken an animal from elsewhere, so like this one, for example, we bought from a private zoo, more often than not, they're not going to be able to be released from the wild because they have some condition where they can't. So the only options really are there to quick trade them out of the zoo, trade them on the marketplace as well. If you would like to, if you're in franchise mode and you'll have that option there too, so you could trade them on the marketplace and, and you could get conservation credits obviously that way. So if you're not on franchise though, releasing them to the wild is how you're going to get those conservation credits. So I've been through and done them for all of the animals. So we're at kind of nice capacities for all of them because a lot of them were actually starting to get overcrowded. With a new update, a recent update at the end of last year, they now kind of have this sort of, uh, how should we call it? We're going to have a look at this, maturation rules. So all mature offspring are tolerated. So even if we went over the required two males, we had four males in there, if they're offspring to existing adults, then they'll still be tolerated within the group but it does mean you end up with some overcrowding. So it is something to just watch out for and make sure those animals are happy, particularly if you've made your habitats, you know, almost on the limits in terms of size for the amount of animals that you wanted in there. 
So yeah, I've been through and released tons of animals to the wild, which has increased our conservation credits, but I haven't done it yet for the penguins. So you can see here, let's actually just filter by our African penguins. We have now 61 of them <laughs> in this habitat. So there's a hell of a lot. Um, we've got obviously the ones that we named up front, and this is kind of why I've stopped naming all of the animals because they just keep dying and leaving the zoo and it ends up being quite sad. So I'm becoming less attached to the animals by not naming them. But we've got tons, we've got absolutely tons. And the other thing in here as well is if you are concerned with inbreeding, which can make have a knock on effect on their stats. So things like longevity, immunity and size in particular can be really affected and fertility by inbreeding. So you probably want to keep an eye on that and try and introduce new animals from the animal trading center when you can to, to stop that. Um, so that's the other thing to consider as well when you're buying and selling animals. But we have a lot of penguins in here and I think we can make some conservation credits from them. And the African penguin is actually great for this because they breed so, so easily. You could almost farm conservation credits from them and have a kind of breeding zoo just from these animals. Now, if I go into some of them, the one thing with African penguins I like to take into account of is their bonding status. So they mate for life. So if we have a look at another one, see this, this uh, Luzoko has a mate in Nobantu and they're bonded for life and oh she's actually pregnant there we go <laughs> so i kind of don't want to break up couples like that so what i'm looking for when i'm going through and choosing which penguins to sell are the ones which aren't actually bonded up or if i'm going to sell ones which are bonded then i'll sell both the pair as well because i kind of feel like that's a nice way to do it now we have a lot of males here and not very many females so i'm actually conscious about that and i think there's another jubilani that's got the same name I think we'll just stick to selling a few males because, yeah, we seem to have a very heavy male population here. And I'd also like to make sure we're keeping the higher rated animals, the ones with the better specs as well. So that's also something to consider. Unfortunately, Nyasha does not have a mate at the moment, but you can stay definitely because you are a gold rated penguin there. But we'll get rid of a lot of these other ones. And I tend to look also for the older age animals because they'll obviously fall off the uh, mating cliff in a sooner time length. So we want to kind of probably get rid of those first over the younger ones. So I think I'll select all of these ones for now, release to the wild. You can see we're getting really decent conservation credits from these. So 645 just from selling those few penguins. Um, so definitely worth it with the African penguins to keep checking on those. Now, of course, the other thing is they can have up to 200, I think it is, penguins in one habitat, or even 500 maybe. So they, they're, not, they're not short on space. They're absolutely fine if they get overcrowded. Just let them breed up for a while and then sell a few and you'll get lots of conservation credits from it. So the plan for today's build is to finally add in our grey seals into this little kind of half done habitat <laughs> over here. And finishing off this sort of underwater world that we have going on over here. So of course with the penguin viewing platform or area, underwater area here, we've got this horrible looking tunnel walkway through into the small world Asian otters over this side and then we'll have our grey seals over here. But one thing I would just like to do before we come on to that is, uh, well, we need to get some, <laughs> we need to hire some more staff for starters. Oh, here we go. We've got some research complete. I've just been taking my mechanics through all the different blueprints actually, so we can have a look at them at some point. So I'll stick them on another one for now. But we need some more caretakers, it would appear, because some of them aren't doing their job down here. And we do have some which are on high workload. Oh, that one's on low workload actually. So let's, uh, let's just train two of these and we'll hire another one. I think what we will do in a future episode is actually come through and start to create staff work zones for some of the caretakers and the mechanics as well, just so that they can get around the zoo a little bit more easily, because at the moment it's starting to become quite a big zoo. And obviously the caretakers just are ignoring certain areas like this. The other thing you can do to help with litter problems as well is in um, employment, you can come in here and choose which task they're actually going to do. So I'm actually going to say you are only on litter and bins. Like that is your entire task. You're not going to be cleaning anything else or doing anything else. So this janitor here, this uh, caretaker is literally only doing litter and bins and that is their entire task. But yeah, before we kind of come onto the grey seals, I do want to do something with this corridor because it looks frankly very bare <laughs> and pretty awful right now. So my idea for this is to actually add in a few exhibits. So because this is like our underwater world, 
I thought we'd add in our underwater exhibit animals, which are the axolotl, the Danube crested newt, and also the diamondback terrapin. So I thought we'd have three exhibits in here, which will also help to draw more guests into the area. Now, in order to do this, what I'm planning is to kind of sink these exhibits into these rock faces here and sort of blend them in. So we do need to do a little bit of terrain work for that. So we're just going to get the push tool and I'm simply just going to push back an area like this. We kind of don't need to worry too much about size for the moment. We obviously want to make sure it's not interfering with any habitats or anything like that. And then we can come into facilities, into ex animal exhibits here, grab our small exhibit stand, and we're just going to place this in next to our path here. Now I want to try and get it as close as possible. It looks like the terrain, yeah, we've pushed down the terrain underneath it. So this can be pretty tricky to do. So we're going to use flattened foundation. We'll right click and then just draw across this area so that we know we're getting in a flat area. And in fact, we're, we're going to do this twice now because we do want to get two exhibits into here. But let's just turn this around now. And yeah, this is nicely flat to the ground. I want it right up next to the edge of the path, which is difficult to see <laughs> with the uh, grass on. So let's come back into terrain, into painting. Let's turn it into rock smooth so that we can actually see the edge of the path here. Then we'll go back and grab our exhibit. and We'll turn it around so it's nice and parallel as possible to this path, but still making sure that it's connected in. I think if we do it there, you see it's not actually connected. You can see that layer of ground. I don't know why it's flashing so much. You can see that layer of ground behind it. And now we want to have another one in here as well, but we can see we are, our terrain is kind of interfering with that. So we'll need to just steadily push this up a little bit. Remember the angle that the circle is at is the direction you're pushing in. So keep that in mind when you're coming to do this. And with exhibits as well, you don't need a staff path, remember? So you, your keepers will be able to reach them no matter what anyway. And then we can just simply pull in this rock face in just gently around it so i'm just simply like clicking with the mouse i'm not really kind of forcing it too hard i don't need to worry about the back because the guests aren't going to see that and we get these exhibits nicely in the rock face now we're going to use rocks to cover this up and help them blend in so you can see around the staff entrance that we've done there that needs <laughs> a lot of detailing as well we're going to use rocks to blend those in so let's grab our temperate rocks as that's our theme and these are the same as this rock texture that you can see on the actual terrain here, which is super handy for getting these in. So then what we want to do is position these rocks around these exhibits to sort of blend them into the existing environment. Now it can be tricky to get some which aren't going to spill into the actual exhibits themselves. So you might have to be a little bit careful with placement here. Um, but we can see that as well. Let's actually add in our exhibit animals. So I've already been onto the exhibit trading here and got the animals that we want. Uh, so let's send those in there. You can see the rocks are kind of spilling in around it. Let's also put in our newts over here. I don't really mind the rocks coming through too much, um, but we need to see what it looks like once we've got the walls on. So we need to research it to get more layouts for it. We definitely want to check the temperature so you can see here humidity is slightly too low. It needs to be 55 to 75, so let's raise this to 65 so it's nicely in the middle. That's 12 degrees to 25. It's okay as it is at the moment, but let's kind of put it somewhere in the middle as well there. And then on customize, let's close off all of the windows, so not window one all the three windows behind it and we'll change these to 2d facades like this and so you can see like having the rock spill through doesn't matter too much we want to make sure the animals aren't kind of cutting into it we can see a little newt there swimming around so it's not too much of a problem but you might want to avoid it and uh, position those rocks quite carefully around them so it's not too bad at least so yeah, that's the top kind of general principle for adding these in underground. I will just now go into a very quick time lapse to finish off these rocks around. It's going to be the same techniques as we've used before. So picking the rocks nice and carefully from the temperate theme, as I've mentioned, so that it blends into the rock texture around us when I'm going to cover the entire thing in rocks and doing something nice with the front of it as well. So we want a few little kind of rock faces and the ones that we can use for that are the cladding. So things like this two by four, if we come into here and we say align to surface, will really nicely snap onto the surface for us. And then we can actually just hold Z to rotate it round. You might want to hold shift to move it backwards and forwards how you like, or you could press X from this point to position it a little bit more 
close to the end a little bit more finely. So we'll position these claddings on the front because they won't interrupt too much with the actual habitat itself, which is uh, always a good thing to have. And this one's slightly too low, so we'll pull that up. But that's what we're going to do is go all around and just blend these into our little rock tunnel, as well as adding in, of course, the terrapins the other side. go we've got our exhibits in nicely and i also decided to add a cosmic cow milkshakes because why not we don't have any guest services really down in this area so i thought having a drink stand at least would be good we may even add in a food stand if there's kind of demand for it further down the road we've got some more space in the walls that we could utilize for that um i did also decide to hide the exhibit education boards you can see uh, it's kind of hidden in the wall here so the education is still and i've also decided to hide the donation bins as well but the reason for this is I find them quite ugly, so I prefer the look of these small TV screens. When we click on those, we can choose whatever animals we want to from those. So yeah, the education boards are still there, so they still provide the education needed. And make sure that you assign them to your animal before you hide them in the wall. It can be tricky to pick them up otherwise. So they're still providing the education, but they're hidden, and therefore we don't have them kind of blocking up the entrance and we can put in these little TV screens, which I think look a lot nicer for that. And I've also used the rock cladding on most of it. So if we go back here, you can see, well, there's the hidden donation bin. A lot of this is open, but you can't really see it because we're all about the face here. But I felt it looked a little bit too smooth, so I have added in some larger, more kind of, you know, regular rock-shaped rocks in various different places to keep them sticking out and make it a little bit more interesting. And it blends in really nicely into our little tunnel environment, gives people a reason to come down here, like we said, and just, yeah, helps make something a bit interesting out of a really dark tunnel that we have in this place. Now I'm gonna click pause because we have started to get some protesters in because I've bought the seals, I've sent them off to quarantine, and now the protesters are protesting that they don't have a habitat to live in. So yeah, we need to come on and build this now. 
So my plan for this, it's going to be quite a large habitat. Um, the seals don't need too much space. We just have a little look at them. They're only on least concern, so they're not like super kind of uh, endangered or anything like that, but they are pretty high attraction, um, which is good. So I'd expect a lot of visitors to be coming down here. They don't need a super high boundary, 1.8 meters. So we can come onto that. Um, in terms of the adult population, it's uh, up to eight. So two males, eight females. So if we do that, and they only have one baby each as well. So let's say we have the maximum of eight babies. We're not looking at massive space requirements for this. They do need quite a bit of deep water, as you would expect to swim in. But one key thing is the temperature requirement here. So you can see it's minus 15 to 26. We are currently at 26 degrees. So we will need to add some habitat coolers just to reduce it a little bit and make sure that they're not too hot. So that is one thing that we haven't touched on before in this series, so we'll be coming on to that. The same works for heaters as well, so if you're operating in a much cooler zoo and your animal requires a higher temperature, you can use heaters in exactly the same way. So we'll cover that when we come on to it. Yeah, we're not talking about massive space requirements, much more water than actual land requirement, which is the key thing here. So my idea for the habitat is obviously we'll have this underwater viewing area which will be similar to the otters the other side but I'd also like to bring in a path which runs through it and actually over the water to provide guests um, an opportunity to almost kind of walk among the seals which I think will be a fun idea and something actually that I kind of took inspiration from Delay Designers City Zoo grey seal build from a few years ago so if you haven't seen that do go and check it out but that is a fantastic grey seal habitat build so we're going to be kind of using her idea of running this path over the water in here to do that now my other consideration is the train that we will be putting in within the next couple of episodes i would have thought i just wanted to make sure we've got enough habitats to keep it interesting because the main train station, if I flash up the zoo plan now, you can see the train station is going to start from the main start area next to the food court and run all the way up to the plaza and then back around the other side. Now, the important thing is we want to make sure that it has high entertainment value so people can actually see animals. And part of this track is going to run round the seal habitat here. So I'm going to bring the main path around quite like sort of far out to leave lots of space for this and the train is going to essentially cross over this path and come round. Now we want to make sure that they've got a view of the seals without barriers. <laughs> so we're going to have to sink down a little bit of this land and maybe raise some up for the train track to run around the outside. So there's going to be a lot of terraforming involved in this to get that in nicely. So we are going to start off by just doing that. So for starters, let's join up our main path that we have here. So we're going for eight meters wide. We'll just go for a single length. That's fine for now. We're just going to keep bringing this out straight for a little while. And then we're going to start curving it round this habitat. Like we've got tons and tons and tons of room there. So it really shouldn't be a problem from that respect. And then we're going to blow it up and into this path that we have over here. I'm thinking something along those lines and of course the train crossing over and running up here so I think we will put this on a very small little bank so for this I only really want this to be two meters high because of the requirement for the grey seals being 1.8 meters so what we're actually going to do is we're going to stamp down here by six meters let's let's make this a little bit larger so we'll go to nine meters we we'll stamp down by six meters here and then we're going to come up by eight meters in the middle of it. So I know this is sort of <laughs> a slightly strange way of doing it, but at least we get the measurements. So this should now be two meters above the ground height. So this is what our train can sit on. We can then grab flatten to foundation. If we grab that height, we can just pull this across and start to create an embankment for our train running along here. So you can see the people from the path won't be able to, or from the main path at least, won't be able to see the seals. But I'm not worried about that because we are, like I said, going to have that path running through the habitat, which I think will be a fun addition for it. And I'm thinking actually with the train, it doesn't need to be that close to the path because this habitat definitely doesn't need to be that large. So let's just grab that height and start raising up an embankment, I think, around here. And we'll need to slope it down to cross back over the path this side as well. So it's pretty much going to go straight across, I think, at around this point. So we can flatten out a lot of this and just tidy it up quickly. And I am just going to use terrain stamp tool on this at a height of four meters 
just so that we can grab the bottom layer of this so flatten to foundation here we'll grab that and just pull this out because then we can make some and let's re-flatten where the train line's going to go because then we can make a slightly harsher bank on this side of it and know that this is kind of two meters under the normal height in fact we don't need it to be that high so i'll go for a different height here but this just can create a slightly more formal barrier against that train line for which we can bring out the grey seal habitat. So yeah, this is the kind of area that it's going to span. So like I said, it will be pretty large and it does leave us with a bit of space on top of underwater world or water world, whatever we're going to call it up here to do something uh, there. I think we will also uh, extend out this star facility at some point to include another vet surgery, maybe another quarantine as well, just to help out with terms of movement around the zoo really so we'll leave that space for there but this is going to kind of form our rough edge of it so the next thing i do want to do is um, go ahead and get in our raised path which is going to flow over the water here and we want to do all of the path work before we put in any water because it's really tricky to undo it otherwise and i'm thinking as well this water area is going to be extended quite a bit into the land but we'll do that when we come to kind of design the habitat so this path will flow right over the water and out into the path the other side. So I'd like to use some beach boards, I think, for this will be nice. And we don't need to be super wide, so I think we'll go for six metres here. But what I would like is for it to be raised slightly over the land. So this is why we have actually just lowered down the terrain a little bit here, because it's going to make it easier for us to put in this path. So you see, this is on this level. If we just hold shift here, we're going to raise it up very, very slightly, which will give us a nice kind of elevation above this. Like, I don't want it too high because a lot of this we're going to be pushing down into water, of course, as well. And then what we're going to do is just basically snake this through this area. So we want to hook it into this path if we can. Yeah, OK, that will do nicely there. And yeah, then we're just going to kind of create a bit of a wavy path all the way through this habitat like this and like I said most of this will be over water so we don't have to kind of worry about that I can see here already the terrain is a little bit too high for our path at this level so let's just push it down here and we'll create a nice watery area in this bit of course we need to tidy all of this up when we come to do it I have also in terms of the path options of course left on railing because Clearly that's important. You could put in your own custom rating if you want to, but I think for this, we're just gonna make it a little bit easier on ourselves and not bother, use the railing that is given for this. And I have also left on path supports on raised path as well. Again, quite important so that it looks sensible <laughs> under the water. So we can just hook it into the path like that and that's gonna create a really nice little walkthrough through our habitat here. So what I'm going to do now is just do a little bit of terrain work to uh, kind of more formalise where the habitat is going to sit. So I'm going to bring some of this a little bit closer in, bring more water in around this area. So I'm thinking in terms of the land space, we'll have an area here where they initially come in on the path, which we might have to just drop down a little bit further to provide kind of safety for the seals in that area. And then a larger land area here with the water kind of flowing up towards the train in the middle and a tiny kind of bridge or something like that over so that the keeper can travel to both parts of our land space for our seals.
Okay, so we have the sort of formation of our habitat in, obviously with the invisible barriers, as that is what I like to use. I may change up certain points to be actual barrier. I'm thinking particularly around this area here and perhaps around the staff entrance over this side. But we'll see when we come to designing it out. But I think this is going to work quite nicely with the raised train line running through here. I cannot wait to get that in, actually. I think the views of that down into the seal habitat in particular are going to be really, really nice. There, of course, the train is going to come around here, around a I'm not sure what's going to go in here, actually. Potentially Bongo, maybe Gazelle. Um, but then we're going to have the African savanna habitat all the way out here as well, which the uh, train will flow past at this point. So, yeah, <laughs> it should be some pretty exciting views from seals to African savanna. Quite a change there. Now, I'm wondering, do we need more barriers in before we move our animals in? If we go into animal, not into animal trading, because of course we've already moved them to quarantine, let's click our grey seals and say move, and we'll move them into our habitat. And then we can just check the size of it before we progress too much further with any detailing. And also the escape points as well. So I'm hoping that they won't actually be able to escape over here. We're of course going to detail this up. We're going to put rocks all around this but I'm also hoping they won't be able to escape over the natural barrier at the back of the water this side. They will hear. <laughs> they will hear. I'm absolutely sure of it. Um, the other things we do need to consider are water treatment, because this is out of effect of any of our water treatment plants. Now, just to be clear on this, you can see here with the otters, this is touching this tiny corner of it, which means it's clean, but also this water source actually extends from the lake, which again, of course, is covered by this one. But as long as your water source is even just touching one of the water treatment plants, you'll be fine and you'll have clean water. It does not need to cover the entire water base, just to be really clear on that. I don't know why we've got one over there. <laughs> that was um, that was probably an error of mine. I could probably shut that down and we'd save a bit of money on that, but uh, there we go. So we don't have any coverage though for our seals, so we're going to need to come into facilities into utilities here, into water treatment, and plop one of these down. Now I'm going to add it to this group here just for the moment, and I would like that turned round so it's facing the front. Now as well, I'm also going to want a water temperature regulator this time for our seals, just to make sure that they're not too hot. So let's also place in one of those, and then we can have a little chat about that. I want to connect the paths in. Can we start from here? flow into that one, then continue on, flow into that one, and then connect it up to our staff path. We can. So there we go, all three of those will be connected now. If we just come back into here, you can see it's now touching this water, so that's fine. The trouble is it's also touching our otter water. Let's move this. Let's put it somewhere over here, just for the moment. So let's exit this group so we're not still within that. Let's plunk it down, let's say, here. I think that's far enough away from any paths. Yes, it will be. And then what we can do here is actually adjust the range of it. So when we come back into water, we can look at temperature water. Oh, it's not powered. <laughs> well, there we go. So let's uh, let's get a power source for it now. When we come back into this, yes. So this is just touching the water here, but what we can do is just adjust the range of it down a little bit so it's only touching this water source. And then we can make it quite a lot cooler. So let's make it down to like five degrees for the seals, I think, and that will be okay. And the water cleaning is absolutely fine. That's touching both of them. That's no problem at all. That doesn't matter if it does. But of course now I want to connect these up. Now we will move these when we come to design out this area. But I think we'll put another habitat in the top here somewhere. They won't stay there, but they'll do for now. They're controlling the temperature. I've just realised the seals are in. Are they not escaping? Let's click on habitat. And yes, of course, there are <laughs> escape points, which is fine. But the good news is that aren't there, which is mainly what I wanted to look out for. And of course, we need to uh, pay attention to those. So that's not a problem at all. We go to terrain. How are we do? We're, we're <laughs> way over the size. Of course, these are going to quite dramatically reduce when we start to add rocks and foliage in. And we also need a hard shelter in as well, which is going to take up some space. But that, that's massive overkill. It does not need to be this big. We will have more animals in it, of course, which will increase the requirement. But yeah, major overkill for right now, which I am uh, guilty of. 
I like to have nice large habitats. So there we go. Now the one challenge we do have when we're detailing this is coverage. So they like very, very little plant coverage. So we can't really use plants to make this look nice. So it is going to be a case of using a ton of rocks um, to get in a nice kind of habitat that we like here. I'm just thinking traversable area actually, if we go back to that. Yeah, they can't climb on there. They can get onto the island, which is exactly what I wanted. And we'll try and make that a little bit easier, I think, through some rock work there too but they can traverse all the bits we wanted them to. Of course, we'll block off these areas. See, so yeah, lots of rocks <laughs> are going to be in this. So we're going to use some of the aquatic pack rocks in particular to really design this out because they come in quite interesting shapes with archways and stairs and things like that that we can use to design nice areas for our seals. So we're going to be using those quite extensively. We'll add in a few plants here and there where we can, particularly underwater, I think, which will make it look quite nice. But in general, it's going to be very rocky. Now, of course, we're going to need to do some research on this. So I'll get the vet set up and that in just a second. We do want to pay attention to terrain. So lots of sand or snow is fine um, and no grass long as to be expected. So rock and sand. It's really sand, really, actually, that we'll pay attention to here. So we'll have some nice beachy areas, I think, along the side. But yeah, just going to talk about temperature cooling. So if we come into the habitat menu into heaters and coolers, you can see you've got a cooler and a heater and they work in the same way. So you can see the area of effect. So we don't need to worry about the water because obviously we have cooled that now, but we do of course want to add these in for the surface. So let's add one in here. And the reason why we'll just do one is because we copy it and it will copy our temperature ranges. But I'm thinking, and of course, you can change the range of it as well if you want to make it smaller or narrower, if you've got another habitat nearby that you don't want to affect by this temperature range too. And then we can change the temperature here. So I'm actually thinking like five degrees is fine because they had quite a wide ranging thing. We want to keep it cool enough for them and make sure that our 26 degree heat, which was the top of their range, so they should be okay like this actually. But we just want to cool it to make sure that if we go any higher here, it's not negatively affecting them. So we'll place that in and then let's duplicate this. Now we want to kind of make sure that we're covering all of the different areas. If we press play, we should be able to see the temperature dropping now. Um, but we've got this area over here. So I think we'll add another one here and another one somewhere in the middle. Now you see, we can see that temperature dropping cooler now. So you can see the area of effect from that. So having one here will be needed and potentially even another one up here just to make sure that all of those land areas are nicely cooled. The island in the middle may also need a bit of cooling, so let's again add another one. And like I said, that temperature requirement is now copied across, so you'll see here it's on that five degrees, but all of them will be operating the same. And if you don't like the look of them, of course you can sink them into the ground, so let's press X on this one, and just sink it into the ground, and we won't even see it. Well, you see, if you sink it a little bit low, you can still see the smoke effect from it, which I don't mind too much. And we've got a seal escaped, so um, let's emergency capture that and press pause before any more of them escape. We have got some swimming, though. Loving that, loving that. And we've got people watching them already, so definitely press pause until we've got those education boards in and the donation bins in as well, so we can capture that money. But yeah i think that is really it so it's now time to come in and beautify our habitat and stop the seals from escaping
So I know that was a very long time lapse and I also cut out an awful lot of this <laughs> just because that was pretty rock intensive, I won't lie, but I'm loving, I'm loving the finished results. Quite different to all the other habitats really that we've done, maybe with the exception of the African penguins, just because of the amount of foliage that we are allowed to put in here, which is virtually nothing. <laughs> So if we just start up this side, I have done a little bit of plant and tree detailing down here, but yeah, we've got the water world sign in. I would like to take your suggestions if you think that there is a better name <laughs> for our little kind of water district here. My overall plan for this zoo wasn't really to have themed areas, but we have kind of ended up with a sort of primate land around here, water world around here. We will have an African area around this side. I was thinking Asian probably this way behind the train going that side. South America maybe over here. I'm not too sure. But that does seem to be the way that it's going if we ever make it to it being that big of a zoo. But here we go, we got Water World. So if you have suggestions for a better name for our Water World, please do let me know. Yeah, the seal habitat. <laughs> It's turned out really nice. It's super plain. Like honestly, there really is absolutely nothing to this other than using this one aquatic rock piece over and over and over again. And of course you would have seen, I did make the mistake of not putting on random rotation at first. So I was just having to move them all myself, which is uh, not the way to do it. But the easiest way to do this, if we duplicate this, is to just simply take a piece and hold shift and raise and lower it into the ground. If you've got random rotation on, then you'll find this really, really easy to do. You just go like that, move the next one, go like this, they'll be rotating. Change the height with shift and just move it around with your mouse. So not actually on the X controls is the easiest way to place these in, in this kind of formation. So that's really exactly what I've done here, apart from only turning up random rotation halfway through. <laughs> so yeah, it ends up with this really nice, like rocky effect all the way around the habitat. We'll come back to the barrier in a second, but yeah, really. <laughs> really loving it particularly this bit around the water here we've just got a few trees and bushes in the background just to kind of like shelter well actually the water treatment of the electric from the back there we've obviously got this archway we'll go underwater in a second as well and this was earth so this was actual terrain underneath here and i just completely covered it up with these rocks because i just it blended into the rest of the environment really a lot better but it does look super cool all the way around and yeah, minimal plants. Like, there's literally one tree here and that is it. I did actually start putting in some dead grass around here but realised it wasn't compatible to our seals so got rid of that. But yeah, there we go. At the entrances we have obviously made these nice little archways with our bronze seal statues on them. I've also come in and said I do not feed as well because they're awfully close to where our seals are all the way around. So that works pretty nicely there. And as well I have with no shame, use the little lighthouse blueprint from the aquatic pack. Do not be afraid to use blueprints, particularly some of these kind of more proppy style of blueprints rather than the buildings. Like that's just so much quicker. I could have tried to recreate this, but I wouldn't frankly have done it as well as this. And yeah, it's, it's just nice and easy and quick to add in some of those blueprints when you need. So don't be afraid to use those. And then we do just have this very simple seal shelter over here. Loved actually the way we've put the fence into the windows to create some bars there. And then just really kind of like made it our own by adding in these little wood touches to the main frame of the building. Super, super simple to do and just gives it a kind of extra little personalised touch, I think. So if we head down underwater, now there were quite a few changes I did make to this off camera. The first one being so this is actually terrain all the way over the top here. And the reason why I did that is because if you have terrain over the top of your underwater viewing area, you'll see this is super insanely see-through water. I come around this side where we don't, the light sort of reflects off it and you get this kind of murky effect and you actually have to go through the barrier to see a little bit better. But it's the same if we come through to the penguins, you see we've got the terrain on top and it's super clear out into the underwater world. So that is something to bear in mind when you're creating these underwater viewing areas. Terrain over the top of it is gonna give you a much, much nicer effect and, and kind of view for your guests out here. So yeah, that's what we've done. And the underwater is looking super cool. Like this archway, we can actually see it better behind the glass, ironically. But this archway worked out so nice. And really, like, again, it's super simple. It's just this one aquatic rock piece that I've used over and over, a few different little plants dotted around in various different places. 
We're just using this at various different heights to create this kind of rocky bottom in a few different places around the habitat. Like it's not all over, it's not perfect. We could go absolutely nuts with it, but the main thing I was focusing on was getting this view from the window, really nice here. And I like it, like super simple when we can't use plants <laughs> or anything like that to just use a few rocks, well, a lot of rocks, let's, <laughs> let's not pretend, to create a really nice area. And of course we've also come in and added in this little custom shelter over here just to decorate up this corridor a little bit better. Again super simple just a few little wood pieces. I did add in the metal bar for realism to show it's all kind of joined together. Um, and then these arctic poles, um, actually from the arctic pack out the front here, just creates a nice little corridor in the middle of our two viewing areas there. And of course we can come then down into the exhibit area and the penguins at the back here. So it looks like it's all kind of come together pretty nicely actually. I'm very, very pleased with how it's sitting in. And let's just quickly talk about this railway barrier here. Of course the railway is going to run right next to this, which is going to give us a super view down into the seals, right down onto their feeding platform there. Just use two very simple breeze bot wall panels here at a nice 90 degree angle to create the walls, which covers up some of that terrain jankiness. Use a little aquatic pack fence to act as a sort of guardrail. Not that the seals could jump out of here anyway, but at least that sort of shows that. And then just created our own little barrier for where the train is going to run alongside it. Now all of this is still to be detailed because I don't know exactly how the train is going to be fitting in here so around the outside of this habitat is very very bare indeed but yeah <laughs> I think that's going to be a nice view once we get the train running through here and right across these paths either side. One thing I do need you to do because I actually kind of wasn't planning to leave this space here is to let me know what animal you would like to see in this area and I will take a viewer suggestion on this so Bear in mind we're going into the African area here, so I don't know if you want to keep it on theme or maybe it's another sort of water-based animal to go around this area. Probably not a deep dive one because we've got enough pools here already and we've also got this path flowing underneath. But an animal preferably that doesn't need too much space. Maybe we could do like a nice kind of pond in the middle of it or something like that. Let me know your thoughts on that and we will get in an animal of your choice into this area. But for today that is going to be it so if you have enjoyed the video likes comments and shares are really greatly appreciated and keep those suggestions not just for that new animal but for any animal you would like to see in the zoo coming. I'm kind of redoing the zoo plans all the time and I'd love to hear what you want to see or what style of habitat you want to see or any topics as well you want me to cover as a beginner that might be helpful um, and useful for you in your planet zoo journey. So let me know that in the comments. So while you wait for new content, why not check out one of the videos on screen? Otherwise, thank you so much for tuning in and I'll catch you again next time. Bye bye.